Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another one of my videos. This is going to be um, a multiple part video series of how I paint um, reborn dolls. Um, this is how I paint them. Everybody paints them differently. So this is um, for learning purposes. Take it with a grain of salt because um, some things might work for you and some that don't work for me and vice versa. So I'm going to be painting this uh, Reborn right here that I'm holding. Um, she is by Eliza or Elisa Marks. Um, it's the kit that starts with a Y. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm, I'm bad of names. But I'm going to be painting um, her as a cuddle baby so uh, she won't have any arms and legs. So... Um, I mean, painting a reborn is kind of the same uh, techniques or the same colors that you would do on like the face. You just do it at different places on the arms and legs. So I was just going to document um, painting a cuddle baby because it's only the head and it would take less time to do that. And um, I could hold myself accountable to making this video. Um, because if it would be too long and complex, and I usually just start painting my Reborns and, per and forget to press record. So with just the head, I um, feel like this will be uh, easier for me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next step. So the next step that I do with painting a Reborn doll is I wash the kit. Um, the reason why I wash the kit is there is sometimes little, like, marks, um, of, like, oil or the stuff that was inside of the, the mold that they casted it from. Um, or sometimes there's little, like, black specks or just extra pieces, like, of vinyl that can be washed off. Um, like, down here, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, there is... A little brown like yellowish brown spot that is like some like oily dirt and it will wa wash right off when I wash it um, so uh, I would usually fill my sink with um, water and I would put in some Dawn dish soap which um, I use Dawn because Dawn um, cuts grease so you want to make sure that um, it's a good soap like that so I usually clean my sink first, because it looks really dirty right now. But I usually clean it, and then fill it up with water. I'll put the soap in so it's nice and soapy, watery. I just put all the kit uh, parts in there. Um, wash them with my hands. You can use a, a washcloth if you, if you want to. But I just keep them in there. Scrub them, wipe all the like little parts, the ears, and all the cracks. And then I rinse it off with super hot water, as hot as you can handle. And then put it on the rack to dry. And then, so I do that with all the, the parts. Um, because she's only a cuddle baby, which is a head, I'm just going to wash uh, right under the water with my hands with the soap so I don't have to fill my sink um, with water and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
Now she is be done being washed, so I'm just gonna set her somewhere to dry. So the next step that I do is neutralize the kit. Um, some people choose to do this step, some people um, don't. I also um, prep the kit by using thinning medium to put on the kit to and bake it a few times to have like more of like a texture, kind of like a base layer that all of the paint can stick onto. Um, some people do this, some people don't. Um, I've just picked up these little habits from different artists that I've watched on YouTube um, or just figured it out myself. So what I do is I take Genesis Thinning Medium and it's like a thick white pasty stuff. This is not the chart it came in. Um, I have the jar over there but this is just a smaller jar that I put it into. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit for this kit because it's only a head and I won't need um, a whole batch. I'm also going to put some different colors into the thinning medium to more neutralize the color of the vinyl. So I'm just scooping some out into here. That's probably good. <clears throat> and so she's still drying a little bit, but um, I'm going to be picking a color to neutralize this. And to neutralize a color in color theory, you use the color the color that is opposite of the color it is on the color wheel. So I don't have a color wheel but I have one on my phone. So if you look at her kit it's hard to tell obviously on cameras and it depends on the lighting you have but um, I would say like she this is a German vinyl so she is more orange than yellow um, compared to like a yellow or already neutralized kit that is like white. So she is probably around here which is like orange or yellow orange and the opposite of that um, is like blue. Um, let me compare another kit. So I've been working on this kit but the bottom ring is still the original color. So compared to this bottom ring, compared to her head, you can tell that her head is way more orange than this bottom ring is. So I would even say that there is maybe a tint of like red mixed with the orange. Because um, if I compare it to yellow, Like you kind of have to figure out, like it, it, like it. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it matches more with this reddish orange than it does with a yellow, and it's like hard to determine exactly what color it is. But any blue, either, even if it's like a green blue or a magenta blue, a purplish blue, no matter where it is on the spectrum, it's going to neutralize the kit. It just not might might not have it be like the perfect um, neutral color which I also don't use dark uh, colors like dark blues on it to neutralize it because then you're just going to be adding color you're not going to be lightening up the orange that it is so if that makes any sense at all <laughs> um, I'm probably going to mix a blue with a hint of a green in it um, because I feel like it's a more darker orange than it is a yellow compared to the other kit that I sh showed you. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, this blue is a blue that has a magenta or a purple um, added into it which you couldn't really tell unless you've ever mixed paint before and this paint it has 
um, white in it, so that's why it's really light colored. But it has um, a green mixed into it, or a yellow, I, would, I should say, um, mixed into it to make a more a greenish blue. So I'll probably use um, some of this and then um, maybe a tiny dot of this ultramarine blue. But it's going to be so light that you could like hardly see it because I don't, when I'm painting it on there, I don't want it to show up as blue stripes. So, that being said, I'm going to mix up some into the thinning medium that I have. So I'm going to use this brush um, because I don't like using a lot of brushes to mix. Also this is thinning medium. This is um, not thinning medium. Uh, paint thinner. So this is watery paint thinner. I get the Mona Lisa paint thinner. I can show you that in a second. But I'm going to put a little bit in here because I want this to be smooth and runny. Not like the paste because I don't want it to just like go on as paste. I want it to be smooth and have an even, even coat. So as you can see it's getting mushy and thinner. And then I'm just gonna dab my brush into it and see that tiny tiny little speck on there at the end. Like that might even be too much. I'm gonna like dab a little bit off. And I'm just gonna mix it up in there. Um, dab a tiny tiny dot. Mix it up in there. And then I'm gonna dab a little bit. Let's see. There's a tiny dot at the end. I'm going to mix that up in there, and then I'm going to add some more um, paint thinner to here so it can mix up evenly. And this is a really, really, really small amount, but I don't want to um, have a big amount, like I said, because I'm just having um, a, small, uh, a small head to paint and also... Um, this is for like a German orange vinyl and I usually paint like kits that are already pretty neutralized so I wouldn't need to neutralize it because um, I can just paint uh, white layers onto it and make it look br like uh, brighter and lighter and then um, it would be fine so if I was making um, a batch for painting multiple kits I would make a bigger batch so, if you can see that little amount, it looks even lighter because um, the thinning medium was a little thick and it looked white when it was thick. So, this is the color. It kind of is the color of my brush, but a little bit more pale. So, as you can see, it has a tint of blue to it. And if you told somebody that this was like white, it could be like a color of white because there's tons of different colors of like white because you could hardly tell that it has a blue tint to it. So that is the color that I'm going to use. Um, and you can see how um, runny it is. If I push it up it goes down pretty fast. It goes down slow because it is like a more like thick um, pasty stuff in it but it goes down like pretty fast Con compared to that like paste that looked like toothpaste you want it to look like the toothpaste you spit out of the sink <laughs> that's kind of a gross description but okay so I just mix that up really well um, you want to make sure you like smash your brush down mix mix smash it down because the little paint you got at the tip of your paintbrush you need to mix it in really well because you don't want to be painting your kit wiping it wiping your paintbrush across it and then have a blue, bright blue streak of paint that never got mixed in. So, you gotta mix, mix, mix. 
So now that that is ready, I'm going to grab a sponge. Let's see, do I have one around here? Um, excuse my back. as I grab a sponge. So this is just a cosmetic wedge and I just like to pull the little corners off of the sponge so they don't have like super defined corners. They still have defined edges but like when I pounce like I just pounce like super randomly all over so you can't really see the lines. Um, I don't know if this like makes sense to you because um, if you're a super, super beginner, beginner, you wouldn't, um, or if you haven't painted a Reborn before, um, you wouldn't know, like, experience of, like, you pushing on the sponge and then you taking it off and then you can see, like, obviously where the sponge was, like, the definition of, of a square right on there. So, you want to, like, pounce, like, in the middle, all over, so you don't see the lines. So, um, she is pretty dry. I'm going to feel the inside of her head. There is a little bit of moisture, but the outside of her face... Let me see. Looks pretty dry. I'm looking like inside the ears and inside of the cracks to see if like there's any water left over because you want it completely dry before you start painting. So how I'm going to do it is I'm probably going to paint it on with the paintbrush and then pounce it off with a sponge. Um, I'm actually going to use a different sponge, so excuse my reach again. So, got a different sponge. And also if you saw my hair in that clip, I'm sorry because my hair is like a mess because... I am just chilling out all day painting reborns and I don't have to leave the house so my hair is messy. So I just like picked the corners off of that sponge. I don't I don't even know if it helps but <laughs> that's what I do. And um, now I'm going to mix up my stuff and then kind of like wipe it on the sides of the jar so I don't have like a whole bunch in my brush and then I usually start off the back of the head for like everything and I just wipe it on there which you can see it because of um, the wetness of it looking shiny you probably you won't be able to see like any color or anything besides like the color change like it looks different because it's like wet but it won't necessarily look like the darker like it looks darker compared to like the dry spot up there but that's just not necessarily because of the color that's in the paint. It could just be because it's wet. And you can only tell like how it will look and once your paint is dry. So I'm going to paint where it allowed me to paint with all the paint that's in the brush. And then I'm just going to go and I'm going to pounce it. Pounce the... Bounce the sponge all over. Pounce, bounce. Um, I think those mean the same, those words, but yeah, so I'm just going to bounce it all around, and it's taking off, like, a little bit of paint, but it's, like, it's more of, like, just, like, picking up any extra paint, so it's not, like, so you can't see the stripes of the paintbrush, and, um, it's not, like, thick in some spots and thin in other. It's just kind of, like, blending it out. And you don't want to, like, smear it because, like, you, the reason why you, like, pounce like this and not, like, scrape, like, pounce or, like, move at all. It's like, you're going to move it all around. So if you go like that and then leave it there, there's going to be a spot that has super thin paint and then um, the other parts will have thick paint and then it will look all messed up. So you just want to pounce. This is like how it would be in slow motion. So you're just pouncing everywhere. You're not moving up and down at all. Even though I'm moving all around, I'm still just dabbing it, picking it up, moving it, then dabbing it. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to get some more paint and I'm going to brush it. Sorry, this camera angle is a little wonky for me to, like, paint at because I don't want to 
I'm probably like already moving the camera, so I'm sorry if everything is shaky, but I'm trying not to um, move the camera and make, but I want to get close to the camera so I can show you everything, so my arm is kind of hitting the Okay, so that video stopped because I guess there is a limit on how long a video can be on my camera. I didn't know that, so now I know that. So, um, I'm still just painting, uh, where it is, where the new parts that I haven't painted yet, and then I'm just pouncing, pouncing, pouncing all over and making sure it's evenly distributed. Going this side. You can kind of tell, like, so there's like shiny and it kind of looks like you can see the paint lines. And then once you pounce over it, do you see how it's like more like grainy? Like you can see how it's like the sponge texture on it instead of the paintbrushes. So like that's like what you want because you don't want like, you don't want lines all over your doll to paint to stick inside of. You want like little tiny like holes or crevices so it, it distributes evenly. And this is only if you're putting a uh, thinning medium which is going to be like like a thick sealer. Like this is what I use to seal my kit but I find that if I put it on first in a super thin layer and then bake it four times to like seal it really good and then put paint on it, the paint sticks better. So like if you ever have those like spots like fingertips and toe tips where paint tends to not stick as much I just put some thinning medium medium on it like in a thin layer let it dry completely 100% and then bake it in the oven um, at a higher temperature like 265 um, for like six minutes depending on your if you have a new way new wave oven or a regular oven like it all like depends but I will talk to you about that when we get there so for the face I'm going to like paint on it the same making sure to get in all of the cracks in the crevices and then I'll pounce it off with a sponge and then I will take like a mop brush like a thick one like this and I will dab inside the cracks so the cracks don't fill up with the thick paint and I'll just like yeah dab inside the cracks inside the nose around the nose stuff like that with a a paintbrush so I can get the ex excess out of the cracks because the sponge wouldn't do that so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this and I'll see you guys in the next step so now that her face is all um painted I'm going to let it dry completely and if you look at the back of her head the back of her head looks very like matte like it's not shiny at all um, that means that it is dry and so you can see like um, that her face is still wet so this needs to dry completely because um, matte um, not matte um, thinning medium uh, needs to dry completely before you bake it otherwise it will turn like chalky and just like be really weird and it won't like seal completely so I'm just gonna let it sit here let it dry and then I'm going to bake it in my new wave oven so I wanted to show you quick um, the different types of vinyl um, different types of German vinyl to be specific because they um, tend to have a different color than like a neutral peach color so this is the kit that I'm working on you know so um, in person the coloring you can't really see exactly the colors that I'm using or the color of her vinyl um, because the camera picks it up differently but this is a very orangey orange red kit and as you can see compared to this one this is a, a German vinyl as well and this kit is very yellowy so and this is like neutralized because I just put that layer on you know so this is like a little bit less orangey than it originally was so you can see that this is very yellow compared to this orangey red and then there's also this kit which is very gray colored compared to this kit 
you get, this kit looks yellow even compared to this kit because this kit this kit looks kind of like a purplish grayish um, vinyl color. So I just wanted to show you the difference between that. So the next step is to bake and she is completely dry so when I touch her you can feel like a chalky kind of feeling. Um, that's how you know she's completely dry and you don't see any shininess. So this is my new wave oven. One second. Um, this is what I use. I bake my dolls usually at 255 degrees for um, six minutes. And this is Fahrenheit. Don't use it if you are Celsius. You'll have to calculate that with Google because um, I use Fahrenheit and if you cook it, it will be a higher temperature in Celsius and then you will burn your baby and melt it. So this is Fahrenheit for Fahrenheit. Um, so I usually bake it um, at 255. A lot of people bake their kits for um, a, large, a bigger amount of time and um, a higher degrees, but this is what I feel like works for me. If you take your kit out and let it cool and then take a brand new sponge and wipe it, like not aggressively, but wipe the where you painted and the paint comes off where you can see it on the sponge, then that means you need to paint your, need to um, bake your kit for a longer amount of time or for a higher temperature or both. So this is what works for me, so that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to place the head inside um, of here, I put white uh, towels down it in it, and you don't want your vinyl to touch the metal or the ring around um, that you have it. So make sure you have something on the bottom that is has no color in it, so it won't bleach out into the vinyl. So I just like place some towels in there. Now I'm going to put the head in there, make sure it doesn't fall over, and it's not touching anything like that. And then I'm going to place this back on top. And then I usually press it and cook it. This is, I'm going to show you up here though, how I do it. So over here is the cook temp. I'm going to press that and then it automatically goes to 350 degrees. You will have to press the temperature and the time every single time you bake it, even if you just baked it at two like 50, it's gonna go back to 350. So make sure every single time you put um, the temperature you want in because you don't want it to obviously ruin your reborn. So I pressed cook temp, and now I'm going to press 260 degrees. So for thinning medium, you want to cook it uh, on a higher temperature for a longer t amount of time. So I'm p putting it at 260, and I'm going to press um, cook time, which is down here, cook time, and I'm going to press six. That means six minutes. If you put six zero zero, that is six hours. So do not put six zero zero because the, it will just keep cooking it and it will melt it. So you want to make sure that um, it just says six, no other numbers, because that means six minutes. So then I'm just going to press start right here, but I'm going to put it on top. And then I'm just going to press start. And now it is doing its thing. So um, after it's done, I will take it out and I set it um, over here. I just have a place over here. If it will focus. Focus. Okay. <laughs> I have a place right here. It's just um, a plastic tray with um, some washcloths that are like washed and that are just white and I set the limbs and the head there um, right after it's done cooking take it out and I set it down there and I wait until it's completely cool and then once it's cool again then I can paint the next layer so I'll see you guys at the next step bye so now I just got done baking so I'm going to take it out and it is hot so always be careful when you grab your kit. I like to take them out at right after they're done because if they um for thinning medium sometimes uh 
if the leg is laying down like this, the underneath didn't get a lot of air, and so I like to take them out and flip them over and let them cool on the other side that the air didn't get to, just in case there's like some moisture or um, it's not as cured as the other side. And then once I bake again, I bake it on the side that was touching the ground, so then that side gets um, nice and cured, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take it out as quick as I can, because it is hot. <laughs> put that back on top. So now he's just going to be over there and um, whoa, I could just move it like that. Okay. Um, now he's going to be over there and he's just going to cool down over there. So with the thinning medium layer, uh, you need to bake it like three or four times. So I would, if I was painting a normal kit, obviously it'd have all the arms and legs as well. So I'd bake it and then let it cool um, completely. So right now it is very warm and so it is very squishy. So you need to make sure that it's completely cool and like back to its original like, not like hard, but like you know, harder than squishy. And so once it's completely cool, it usually takes, I don't know, it depends how cool it is in your house and sometimes I put a fan on it so it makes it cool down faster but it probably takes like 15 minutes or so 15 to 25 minutes depending on everything to cool down so once the kit is cooled down again completely I'm going to put everything back in and like I described flipped over to expose the other side to the heat coming down and bake it again for 260 for six minutes and sometimes um, like if it's a really big kit I will do like 265 or if it's like a preemie super super thin arms and legs I would do like probably 255 again um, because uh, sometimes it gets really shiny and like really I don't know it just doesn't like seemed to be the best when I cook it super high temperatures uh, a lot of people would argue with me because they paint them differently so this is just what I do you have to discover like for yourself like what works best for you S but e either way you have to cook the thinning medium like three to four times so once he's dry I'm gonna put him back in I'm gonna bake him for the same amount of time, then take them out, let them cool again, put them back in, <laughs> bake them again, take them out, <laughs> and do that like three to four times. And then after that, then I'll be painting um, the other layers on top of him. So this is just for curing the kit, and I put thinning medium when I'm completely done with the whole painting and everything, all the details. Then I seal the paint by using thinning medium again. So at the end of the process, then you can see me doing this again, but you need to make sure that it is cured really, really well so um, the chalkiness and stuff like that doesn't like move around and especially when you're sealing your kit at the end of the process to make sure it's sealed really good so the paint won't rub off and it can last as long as possible. So this is the end of video one. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for video number two and three and so on. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss don't miss number two video. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.